G'day, how you going? My name is Tech and welcome back to my channel, Bootlosophy. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live and work on, the Wajuk people of Noongar Buja. Today, I'm going to look at these Grantstone diesel boots in Horween's tan Essex leather after over 12 months of not frequent but regular wear. This pair of Grantstone diesel boots were bought at the end of 2021 and got into my hot hands in January 2022. You'll probably say they look almost new and yeah, I don't wear them every day. With over 70 or 80 pairs of boots as it now stands, I don't get to wear any pair of boots every day, but I do make sure that almost every boot gets worn regularly, some more than most. This pair I'd say I put on maybe a couple of times a month. Uh, not all of those times for a full day, but they do get worn, and usually though, uh, through an urban or office situation. They haven't trekked through mud or gone hiking, but they've come through some heavy rain in the city where I live. If this is the first Grantstone diesel boot that you've seen, it's a plain toe, dressy version of a service boot. It has the usual 6 inch tall shaft, block heel, open derby lacing system, it's good year welted, and a reasonably slim profile toe box and rounded but still almond shaped toe. On the website, the marketing photos show it as a, a very light coloured uh, and almost pink boot. In real life when it arrived, it wasn't as light and it was definitely tan, but it was still a light tan and over the last year, still unconditioned, it definitely has got dark and become a, quite an orangey tan. When I bought them, I was a little concerned that they might be the same as my pair of Badalassi Veg Tanned Saddle Tan Diesels. Those started out quite orange, I'll just pull it up. As you can see, the Saddle Tan has darkened and deepened into a deep honey brown, not orange at all anymore. These in Tan Essex have moved over more to what the Saddle Tan looked like when it was new. Um, I've actually already done a review of uh, uh, this pair and you can see it up here after four months of wear. You can watch that video after finishing this one and also compare uh, what they looked like to what they are now. In fact, I also did an unboxing uh, up here as well and you can really see how light they were when new. I'll link both videos below as well. Go to look uh, through my channel videos and you'll find other Gradstone reviews. There are quite a few. You'll also find a review of the Saddle Tan Diesel so you can make an on-screen comparison. So having done a pretty comprehensive review of these boots at four months, uh, where I did my usual deep dive into the manufacturer and the construction, I'm not going to do another deep review here, but I thought it was worthwhile uh, pulling them out again because these boots have shown perhaps one of the most uh, marked changes in colour, hue and character in all of my boots. Actually, now that I think of it, no, my various pairs of boots in natural chrome XL, depending on how old they are, have also shown marked changes. Uh, so let's just say these have changed as much as those. Anyway, in this video, I thought I'd discuss how this boot has worn and uh, after 12 months, whether I still think they're worth it. Let's start with the uppers. I wish I was as meticulous as some other people in various Facebook boot groups who announce how many hours they've worn a boot. <laughs> Uh, trust me, these have been worn well and regularly, if not every day. The leather is Horween's Essex Tanage uh, in a colour called Tan. Horween, as you know, is a five generations tannery that started in 1905, based in Chicago in the US. They are probably most famous for producing Chrome XL, their combination tan leather that's used by oh, practically every good bootmaker around the world. They're also famous for producing Shell Cordovan, that sturdy non-leather tanned from the muscular membrane just under the skin of a horse's bum cheeks. My understanding of the Essex leather is that it is the first tannage from the full grain bovine hide. Uh, the first tannage is a vegetable tan using Horween's Shell Cordovan tanning liquors. Then a blend of uh, fats, oils and greases are tanned into the leather to add durability to the tough veg tannage. It's a base tannage uh, that is uh, then further processed to make Dublin leather. 
Dublin uses the Essex base tannage and adds another rich blend of waxes that I understand is steam pressed to smoothen it out. If you didn't stop there, another set of processes is then applied to Dublin leather to turn it into the Derby tannage. Derby is tumbled Dublin. Tumbling the leather softens it and opens up the grain a bit. It comes out a little more distressed looking and will accentuate the pull up effect. Despite being veg tanned, this Essex leather is way softer in the hand than the Badalassi Carlo veg tanned leather used in Grantstone's saddle tan boots. They're both about the same thickness, but even with the full lining, uh, these are very comfortable because of their suppleness, as opposed to the saddle tan, which is uh, sturdy and supportive comfortable. Not uncomfortably stiff, just comfortable for different reasons, support versus softness. It's creased a little worse probably because it's an unwaxed tannage and seems to take on its use well. Patina at this stage is more about the creases and bows and bends it's developed uh, than any other scruffs or uh, abrasions, mainly because I don't use them that way. There is some patina discoloration, uh, but I think that's actually mainly due to moisture. Uh, by the way, these haven't seen any conditioner yet and I'm going to give them some VSC after filming this. Water, be warned though. When it rains, this leather will show that water. Remember, it's unwaxed in the tannage and it will get blotchy and discolour. The first time it happens, you will get a heart attack. <laughs> but after a few hours, it dries out, returns to normal, except maybe some darkening happens in a few places. You may not like the unevenness. I do. Of course, it's Goodyear welted, uh, which means despite the shock of uh, discoloured wet leather, I haven't had any moisture get into my socks or anywhere inside this boot. And trust me, when we have rainstorms in Perth and Western Australia, they are tropical in volume and intensity. The welt is a flat welt, rare in boots these days as people try to go rugged and add storm and split reverse welts. A flat welt simply means that the welt is flat all the way around the boot uh, and it doesn't flange up to push a ridge against the sides. This is US tanned veg tan flat welt and it's wheeled which means a notched wheel is uh, run over it imprinting this sort of series of bumps or wheel marks. The effect is actually dressy in the overall scheme of the boots. The Leo last design is quite dressy anyway, I think, and the package is a dressier boot. There is an American veg tan midsole, not super thick, four or five millimeters thick, and the outsole is a rubber compound studded sole. As you can see, it's Grant Stone's version of UK made day night studded soles. It has a series of mini studs set inside little welds. The idea is that the studs give grip and the surrounding well allows mud and dirt to fall away and not aggregate. I find the grip pretty good on urban surfaces like cement paving, uh, tarmac, lawn, carpet, lino, timber floors, uh, even in the wet. I think slightly better than day night because it's slightly softer. I'll talk about comfort later. When I first took a look at this pair and even after the first four months, I raved on about the quality control. Yeah, made in China, but I think most of us have got over the fact that quality is not geography and any remaining objections you have to where it's made are about uh, disagreement with all that other stuff. But even so, I have very few pairs of boots that rival the quality control of Grant Stone boots. After 12 months, nothing has come loose. Nothing's fallen off, delaminated, got chipped. The stitching is still pretty darn good. The stitching on the uppers, uh, the stitching on the Goodyear welt, not just good, pretty darn perfect. Not only no loose stitching, no frays from wear, uh, perfect stitch density. The glues used are good. In some of my boots, there's been either some evidence of layer separation, uh, even at the beginning when they were new, even if they haven't progressed since, or there's been an increasing layer separation evident in the block heels, for example, as I wear them. In these, nothing, no movement. Everything that should be stuck together is still stuck together pretty firmly. Hardware, no problem. No shifting of eyelets or danger of popping speed hooks. The backing on the eyelets and speed hooks have proved themselves. In leather this supple and light colored, if they scratch, you see scratches and marks on the tongues. Uh, in these, no scratches. In my earlier review, I've already dealt with sizing of these, so please don't ask me what size you should take in the comments below. Just go and check out that four month review. Anyway, that'll help the YouTube algorithm for me. And while you're at it, don't forget to click on like and on subscribe. But I will talk about comfort here though. 
Uh, an update on how comfortable these are now would be useful, I think. So comfort is a factor of sizing it right. The last, the leather, and what's under your feet. Grant Stone's Leo last is a very comfortable last for me. It's not particularly narrower at the heel, like some Parkhurst and Alden combination lasts, but it is based on the founder's father's experience with dress and orthopedic lasts. So it does grip the heel and waist well. Uh, and then it broadens out at the ball of the feet before it curves into a generous almond-shaped toe box. If you drew an outline around my feet, Parkhurst 602 and this Leo last would fit right onto that drawing. As for what's under your feet, this has a veg tan leather insole, cork layer filler, a steel shank, as well as what you can see on the outside. I mentioned earlier that the midsole wasn't particularly thick, but with the combination of veg tan leather insole, generous cork, and the nearly 5mm thick rubber outsole, this has a lot of shock absorption, uh, whether to cushion your walking stride, uh, running for the bus, or just standing all day. I have different experiences in all of my Grant Stone boots. I find the double thickness leather sole models, for example, best for shock absorption, but difficult to break in at the flex point. Some of the rubber sole models I feel are thinner in that I seem to be able to feel more of the terrain under the boot. These somehow are almost the perfect blend. Uh, they cushion impact, yet flexible. They allow you to be conscious of a secure footfall. The supple uppers I've already dealt with, but I have to mention the soft glove lining. Yeah, sometimes it does get hot, but the difference between these and unlined Dublin leathers that I have in, say, Parkhurst and Oak Street uh, trench boots, it's chalk and cheese. So after 12 months, still scoring at least 9 out of 10 for comfort all round. What about looks? What do I think of the aesthetics after 12 months wear? Now, I think the Diesel is a really stylish boot. It's sleeker and dressier than most other makes that don't straight up make dressy boots like say Carmina and some Alden models. In the silhouette, it's pretty attractive. And on this eye-popping orange tan, and I, uh, I always get compliments from people passing on the street. I really do. The fact that it has some evidence of patina only improves on that, I think. If there's anything I could be critical about, it arrived a little shiny out of the box. I think Grand Stone applies a little wax on their final inspection before they ship their boots out. Uh, if they do, I wish they wouldn't on this model because it does apply a little sheen to what I think should be a more matte leather. Uh, the sheen is only just beginning to wear off now. I expect when I condition it for the first time with Venetian shoe cream, which is my intention, it will shine up again. And if it does, I'm also going to apply a little dubbin wax on it to improve waterproofness, to seal it a bit, and maybe to damp it down in, in sheen. Now, in my previous review, I did deal with value, but what do I think after 12 months and after Grant Stone has increased prices? When I bought these, they cost me 324 US dollars. I think I may have said at the time that I couldn't believe that price and they'd be worth up to 100 more. I got castigated for that comment. <laughs> what do I think now? Well, on the website as I film, they were 380 US dollars, but they're on sale at 285 US dollars. I'm actually recording this sometime before I upload it because I'm going to get busy at work. Uh, so the time it takes to edit this and everything else is going to take some time before I upload. So the sale may have ended or they may not even be available anymore <laughs> because I usually find that if Grant Stone discounts one or two models, those models are about to go out of stock. Anyway, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below if you want to take a look and I suggest you do. Overall, Going from 320 US to 380 US after over 12 months, that's pretty good. At 285 US, that is insanely good value. After 12 months where, do I still think they're good value? Or oh, hell yeah. And that's it, my in a nutshell re-review of these Grant Stone diesel boots in Horween's Tan Essex Tanage. I hope you liked it. You know what to do if you did. Click on like, and if you haven't already, click on subscribe as well. It really will help me to grow my channel and maybe contribute to my costs of taking the time out to make these reviews just for fun. And it'll help you too, I hope, because uh, if my channel grows and if you subscribe, you'll catch all of my other boot reviews, deep dives into boot brands, and maybe the odd comparison and best of videos that 
hopefully will inform you in this wonderful, wonderful boot collecting hobby of ours. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.